Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Board Masters with me, Chris Mullins, peering around uh, the pile of stuff I've got for Dinosaur World that we will be unboxing tonight. I am planning to dive into the expansion boxes as well, but I will be moving those out of the way for just the first couple of minutes while we focus on the main attraction. And one thing I will say straight off the bat is the artwork is so much better than the first one in my opinion. The neon sort of 80s style bright colours was really not my thing and cut me off the game a bit in terms of when I was looking to initially buy it and that the theme was so strong for me and obviously playing off Jurassic Park which I adored growing up. But yeah, the colour style did very nearly stop me from buying the game. Glad it didn't, because I absolutely love the game. Chris and I have done gameplay and a review on the channel, so check out the playlist for those if you like. I believe we gave Dinosaur Island a 9 way back when. My biggest issue, of course, from that was the hideous pink Triceratops that were supposed to be used for every single type of meeple in the, well, every single type of dinosaur, which was just ridiculous. Uh, okay, so let's have a look. What do we have in here? Cool rule book. Lots of meeples that we can see there already. Very different setup, obviously. Again, another minor criticism I had of the first game was that everyone's part boards were kind of the same. And whilst you get a bit of difference in terms of what attractions people bought or what dinosaurs do generally looked much of a muchness. Whereas this one with the with the hexes and everything, it's get, got the potential to look very different. The objective in Dinosaur World, your goal is to build the most exciting, innovative and lucrative park you can. Oh, and also the safest. So again, you're hiring workers, gathering DNA, building your attractions, etc etc so a lot of the similar things from the first game obviously you've got the jeeples which is very different they were not around in the first one and i believe they've also got rid of the sort of what is it the thugs who would sneak into your park and would avoid getting eaten and just take up space for the regular guests they don't seem to be appearing in this rule book there is a solo mode as there was in dinosaur island and then lots of extra information there and some extra components and gameplay rules for the hybrid pack which we have over there which is probably my least exciting of the expansions in my opinion i'm generally not a huge fan of the hybrid theme uh the water pack i am very excited by and i think that's chris's most excited one as well and then we've got the ice age which is very cool and i love the idea of having the sort of mammals alongside the dinosaurs. What do we have falling out of here? Just some um, Pandasaurus games, who are obviously the makers, some promotional material. I'm not gonna go through that. Okay, so I'm guessing these are the initial boards, so I don't know if these are supposed to fit together in any way or if they're for different players. But that's interesting already. And we got, again, I guess these are the different player boards based on the fact that these are all the same, just with sort of slightly different color schemes. I guess they represent your players. And then we got our paddocks. Alex will be very, very excited that we've got an Ankylosaurus because that is his favorite. He adores Ankylos. Velociraptor will always be mine, although technically it's the Jurassic Park Velociraptor, which is obviously closer to a, a Utah Raptor than the actual real Velociraptor, but I don't care, <laughs> quite frankly. I don't need accuracy, I just need things that look awesome. Even if Jurassic Park 3 did try and make them far too intelligent and actually negated a lot of the threat and fear that the 
especially the first film built up with that incredible kitchen scene. Prehistoric garden looks very similar to the Eden project, which is down, down the road from me. Hopefully they are able to crack dinosaur cloning soon. <laughs> I'm not sure it's something they're working on, but if anyone does, I will be very grateful because I definitely want to see them. Raptor culinary experience. I would be first in line for that. There's so many different tiles. There's gonna... I really didn't expect there to be this many, to be honest. T-Rex jet skis and welcome centers and sauropod shelters, evacuation sites, digger dino workshops. They really got the whole theme park covered for all ages. That's a lot of hexes, which is great for me because it's going to add so much variability to each park, which, as I've already mentioned, was a criticism I had of the first one. These are just going to be the DNA storage uh, boards, which I'm assuming are going to be the same for everyone. I don't think there's going to be any differences between them. No, it doesn't look like it. Just to track your DNA, track your security, track your danger, which is all good fun. Love the, uh, the whole danger thing. Then we have the excitement board, which does have a bit of a bend in it, but that's fine because I know they preempted that and sent everyone a spare one, which I put in here somewhere, but I don't know where it is now. Although my spare one does have a tooth mark in it because Binks decided to bite it as soon as it turned up. We do have a cloth bag. I do love a cloth bag in a game. <laughs> a lot of my games do seem to favour them. It'd be interesting to see what goes in there because I know in the first game it was your visitors, but they don't seem to be prevalent in this one. We've got the extra hex, I guess the Kickstarter exclusive Pandasaurus headquarters. More of the, the gorgeous sort of amber style dye with the DNA is sort of a, a nod to Hammond, John Hammond, is it John or Richard Hammond from the first film and the origins of how they found the dinosaur DNA. And then we get into the meeples, which as I mentioned right at the top of the video were my biggest bugbear by a long way in Dinosaur Island, if I didn't have the ability to raid Alex's toys, I would never have played it with those Triceratops. But I may not be able to play with this because I can't get this bag open. There we go. So what have we got? We've got the, the small carnivores. So you've got your Raptors, your Dilophosaurus, Compies, Pteranodons and everything in there. Very nice. I actually feel really cool and definitely different to how I expected. I'm not quite sure how to explain it. I guess are the trites wood in the original one? I kind of expect them more wood than plastic. And then we've got the, the big carnivores, so the Spinosaurus, although that is obviously an outdated design for Spinos now and your, your T-Rexes. I think Spinosaurus in there. I'm not sure where this big yellow one is. He looks uh, very unhappy. <laughs> he definitely looks almost like a giant slug with legs, which I guess captures it quite well. And then we've got the sauropods. So Alex's favourite, the Anki, the proper sauropods, the stegos, the trikes, parasaurolophus, <laughs> I can never pronounce properly. Uh, but yes, lots of variety, all the species represented properly, which makes me very, very happy indeed. Uh, what else have we got in there? We've got the DNA trackers. And there's a shiny pink one in there. I wonder what it, that is going to be for. Uh, some more dice with skull and crossbones on, so I'm guessing that's to do with people getting devoured. Got some nice and heavy, fancy metal coins oh, I love the feel and the design of those again very Jurassic Park feel particularly if you have been to like Universal Studios with the Jurassic Park theme it's got that same artwork which I love and we've got all our, our scientists and workers and Hammond with his walking stick there Love the designs of those. 
in the yellow one supposed to look evocative of the hunter from the first film who him a clever girl in for me of course the blue ones look like vikings i'm not quite sure who they're based off uh they're all good fun and these are the public actions which are I'm guessing are similar to the first game where you have the objectives for the game and it was when you satisfied a number of objectives that's what ended the game. So end game scoring, okay so yeah lots of interesting connotations and things going on there. But that is almost everything for the call box, I missed this little bundle down here. Yeah, we got the Pandasaurus mini. The most fearsome predator of all, the Pandasaurus. There we go. Basically a T-Rex with very cute panda ears. The aforementioned Amber that is very much in inspires the dice. And then we've got our Kickstarter exclusive variety of Jeeples. I believe in the retail version these are all the same design. Whereas obviously in this one we've got four different ones. The yellow one is very cool, orb looking. Whereas the green one does remind me of Jurassic Park. I'm not sure why it's more of an armored vehicle than a Jurassic Park one, where he's got the standard Land Rover and then almost like a buggy type, which is pretty cool. And then we've got all the cards, which I'll probably, yeah, let's have a quick look. Let's get the knife, because I know I'm not gonna be able to open these without it. There we go. Don't know if the wife's noticed that that kit knife has basically taken up permanent residence in the game room. Don't know if she's missing it from the kitchen or not yet. Uh, so again, more objectives, more points. I'm guessing these are going to be related to the public actions, perhaps. But it's obviously tasks for you to complete during your go in order to boost your points. And then we've got helpers and so I guess the market mechanic from the first one is gone as well in terms of you had the the market where you bought the attractions and the helpers although perhaps that that's what they're for it just there may be more in this packet I wouldn't have thought it would carry over if that was all of them because that wouldn't create much of a market if there's only about eight people but we shall see I did quite like the market mechanic. I think I'd be disappointed if that has gone completely. Because I really liked the the mix of mechanics in the first one with the worker placement, the dice drafting, and everything uh, with the marketplace. Again, this is, I guess, the, these objectives having a certain amount of herbivores, large carnivores, a mix of things, having different attractions rather than just dinosaurs which again gives a lot of interesting quirks to the gameplay. You don't want to just have the same, oh, I'm just going to build loads of T-Rexes and get the excitement up. Worker database, not quite sure how that works in, but interesting. But there doesn't seem to be any more staff, so it does look like that is all the staff. So I will just have to see how this plays. But that is everything in the call box, so I'm going to Pause the video there, I'll join you again in a second when we can look at the expansion packs. So bear with me, I won't be long. Bye now. Okay, welcome back. And I am here with the water pack now. Uh, I really I don't know why I'm saying welcome back and I'll be back in a moment because obviously with the editing I was not even gone a second for you guys. So <laughs> I guess that's my presenting style, getting used to those sort of things. I thought I'd start with the water pack of the expansions largely because as I said I think this is the most anticipated from Chris in particular and I'd probably go along with that to be honest I know as a Jurassic World Evolution fan on PlayStation water dinos were the big things that people were always clamoring for and they're getting that with Jurassic World Evolution 2 what have we got here we got the Plotosaurus, Plesiosaurus, Elasmosaurus, 
Dunkleosteus, Mesosaurus, and the Chronosaurus. So some big old boys in there, particularly the Mosa and the Chrono. Obviously, we've got the water arenas, similar to what you would see in, in Jurassic World. And then we've got these absolutely gorgeous minis. We've got the one special dice there with sort of translucent blue. And the same style for the minis, which is absolutely gorgeous, I think. I hope they don't reflect the light too much on the video, but they look absolutely stunning with that clear translucent backing. I absolutely love those. They look fantastic, in my opinion. But that's everything we've got in the expansion box for the water ones. Let's dive into the next one. And again, as I mentioned, probably my least anticipated in terms of the theme, certainly. We've got obviously the special card in this pack here. Not sure why it's stuck on the outside, but I will find out as part of the game. I know it's a promo card linked to it. But, uh, so recruiter promo and that goes next to the worker database at any time once per game you may exchange two of your workers for other workers of any color okay interesting i mean i'm not going to keep it stored sellotape to the outside of the hybrid box so let's have a look see what we have in the hybrid pack So you've got some extra steps in just adding these to that. I don't think they change up the gameplay too much. I think they just give you a choice of using the herbivore or the carnivore icons potentially when you're scoring it. So again, we've got the different paddocks. So we've got the Galaraptor, the Compguanodon, Tyrannoceratops, Brontalosaurus, Velocidon, and a Dilophospinosaurus. So many of the uh, hybrids are quite self-explanatory. I guess it's the Gallimimus with a Raptor, a Compi with an Iguanodon, Brontosaurus with an Allosaurus, Tyrannosaurus with a Triceratops. Which one's the Velocidon? Okay, so Velociraptor with a Pterodon and a Dilophosaurus with a Spinosaurus. And they do look cool. I do really like the clear backing, I guess. With the, with the sort of yellowy theme. I get, maybe if I was nitpicking, it's it's obviously a very similar colour to perhaps the amber theme that's in the core box. And obviously is a big thing in, in Jurassic Park and Jurassic World. But they do actually look cool. I do like them more than I perhaps anticipated that I would. And maybe be interesting to see if how they change up the gameplay because they certainly sound like they bring a different mechanic to it. And then we've got our mammals, the Ice Age pack. I guess I probably am trying to be too particular with my theme and I'm hoping that, I don't know, having these in your park cost you more because you're having to spend extra money cooling enclosures and whatnot. Uh, so there's a chill in the air and these creatures feel right at home. So these mammals rose to own the earth long after the dinosaurs died out. Okay, so each Ice Age paddock shows one of the three dino types. Each mammal there counts as a dino of that type. So we've got the Arctic squirrel, which is super cute. Giant sloth, not quite as cute as the little ones. Uh, Sabertooth Tiger, which was always one of my favourites growing up. I mean, they're so cool. Cave Bears. I mean, bears are always cool, but a Cave Bear is not really any more cool than a Grizzly, for example. Mammoth, you've got to love a Mammoth. And a Megaloceros, which is very fancy, donning its super big headwear. And again, love the clear backing. Love the very thematic 
sort of theming that goes through all of these expansion packs with, with the design of the meeples. I am a huge fan of that and you know Dinosaur Island got a 9 out of 10 with a pretty big negative for me in terms of the quality of the meeples with another negative being that I wasn't a huge fan of the artwork and those two have already been assuaged in this this one in Dinosaur World so hopefully if the gameplay matches up to the gameplay of Dinosaur Island we could be looking at a very big score on the channel again but I'm very excited to get the, this to the table with Chris as soon as possible I'm sure we'll get it we'll play it this week and get it on the channel as soon as we can but that's it for Dinosaur World so thank you for watching look after yourself stay safe and have a good one bye bye now